How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another Let's Play to Learn. In this game we are making a Let's Play to Learn with The Bug Butcher, which is a game recommended in the live stream that I did yesterday. So, I'm really excited. I have only seen the video on Steam. I have not even attempted to play the game at all, which might not have been the best decision, but I'm excited to see how this game plays. This looks really fun and let's play a little bit of it. Um... All I know is it's not a pixel-based platformer, but it's an action platformer with really nice art. It almost looks like Alien Hominid Castle Crashers. So, really don't know how to play. <laughs> uh, just kind of messing around to see if I can figure it out. It's, oh, it's almost interesting. It's a vertical shooter. It's like an arcade vertical shooter game, which is cool. You can only shoot up, and I can... Dash. Literally my only two controls. Which actually isn't that bad since this is kind of a really organized way of doing waves and I love the frame by frame animation. Really cool. Alright, I got some health. Ugh, this reminds me of, um, oh, what was that game called from years ago on Miniclip? Wow. Um, what's that, like the Bubble Blaster game where the bubbles break up into little bubbles and... We play it with all of our friends. Anyway, that's what this reminds me of. It's a pretty cool concept, though, and I'm assuming this is going to get more intense in a second. Let's see. It doesn't look like I can run out of ammo. So one of the things that you'll notice with this game, and this goes back to the art point that we've been trying to make in most videos, is not every single game needs to have insane screen shake and and flashes and FX to really make it stand out. Sometimes the art can do just that. All right, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Wow, that was annoying. All right, in that case, I didn't really like that. It was a little annoying, but for the most part, this is pretty cool. I think this is just like arcade mode. I don't think I'm actually in any story mode or anything, which I guess is cool because Arcade mode kind of just shows you all the gameplay elements that you really need. You don't really need the story mode to learn logic or to do these Let's Play to Learns. Okay, press start here. Nice, so we have a little talent tree. Not enough coins. Oh, there's our screen shake. Interesting that it's on the menu and not the, uh, not the um, game itself. And also, I'm sure this game's a little bit more fun with music, but rather not play with music. All right. Let's see. Don't know what that, that just means incoming. Incoming, new monsters attack. Are we at a, a boss? So again, the art style in this is really cool. Sounds a little bit too, too much here. Okay, there we go. Oops. Uh-oh. No, don't die. The originality in this game, I think, is, is there. Um, my scientist buddy is in need of help. And I think that this has a lot going for it. I know, you're getting eaten. It's what a shame. Oh, he bit his head off. All right, how many enemies did I kill? 62. For my very first time playing, I'm happy with this. Let's see if I'm playing the right thing here. So this is just, is this the single player? Or is just the, okay, wait, maybe I did go single player. Let's try the missions then. I'm gonna try medium. And let's play. Controls are a little weird. I keep, I just exited out of that by accident. Again, even though I'm hitting A. Okay, here we go. This looks more like the uh, the game single player, the Bug Butcher. That's what I was looking for. It's just kind of playing around with the um, the arcade mode. But I mean, look. This brings me so far back to the old uh, Newgrounds days, where this reminds me so much of Alien Hominid. 
and uh, I think games like these can work for itself. You have the foreground, you have the atmosphere, you have the characters that are cute, the animations that are really, really fluid, and it's just the extra details, like the snow that you see, which is really actually an easy effect to do as far as uh, Construct 2 is concerned with the particle effect, but also um, just the the blur in that actual picture. Sorry, this is you know, getting me distracted. Sweet test, Chief. No wonder you guys are all dying. I take offense to that comment. Remember, hold down the fire button and shoots your weapon automatically. One more thing. Make sure your power-ups are working. Listen, buddy, you don't know me. To use power-up, fill up the meter by hitting the cups. So I gotta hit the cups. I gotta fill up the power-up meter. Um, wait. Power-up. What was the power-up? Oh, okay. From as far as I'm concerned, this game could easily be made in Construct 2. Um, I think the thing that has this game separate from every other game you might have seen is the animation. It's absolutely stunning animation for what it is. The artwork is great. Um, and for something that is not pixel art, which is something that I don't play often, uh, I love this. All right, we're back in this room. So now I guess we have just that little bit of story behind us, and now I actually know how to use my, my speed boost. It is a little bit distracting, all these things going on and trying to understand what is happening in this game, uh, while at the same time trying not to die. But the combat in this game is completely unique for an action platformer. You can only shoot upwards, which I really like. I think that that's actually really cool. So defining new ways to shoot in your game or just defining new ways to play an old type of game, in this case, an action platformer, is really a great thing to keep in mind when you're developing your game and something that I think we should take away from the Bug Butcher. It's taking an older concept and making it new again and by adding in the really fluid animations and the particle effects with all these glowing effects, which I'm seeing is kind of their main effect, go-to effect is the blur, the blurry glow. We can learn a lot from this. And then it kind of has like this app-like system here that just tells you what's going on, which I guess is all right. Makes it feel a little bit more like I should be playing this on a tablet or something. But, let's see if this continues. Looky here, I can hack the system and spawn fancy ammunitions for me. Oh, thank you. Wow, I'm a jerk. <laughs> that could have been helpful a room ago. I mean, we've only been barely playing. Do we not go forward in the rooms? Like, is this the only room? Not that that's a bad thing. Okay. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, I like this. Oh no, I want that back. I don't really feel much faster from what I did before. Am I not doing this correctly? For my, my power up here? Aha! I was not doing it correctly was the answer. Look at my animation. Look, look at when he was uh, on his power up, he was just kind of going berserk. One of the things that this game does well, in addition to its art and animation and vertical shooting, is it's almost in... 2.5D. I mean, you could argue that it is because they make it look like it is, but it's not. And that's what's really cool about it. So it's also kind of pushing the environments a little bit further than I would think to in a pixel game. So that's actually something that is good to think about. Oh, wow. All right. The combat's picking up, and that's what I like to see. I really like the fast-paced combat in games like this. Uh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. If I can recognize what gun does what a little bit easier, then, then I'll be a lot better at the game. That's the other thing that I think this game kind of points out. You want your users to, um, to recognize what's going on so they can become better at your game. And then the better they become, the more they enjoy playing, and then the farther they get in the game... And then the more hard you can make it, you know? For some reason, these spiders only eat us scientists. That's relief. At least something's... 
I like the dialogue. It kind of keeps it going, even though it does feel a little bit like it's an app. And we're on the next level here. I do kind of want to change rooms, which even though isn't a terrible thing, again, I do like the whole one room concept. I was developing uh, our game on a live stream as a one room concept. I think that you do kind of need a change though. If Even if it's the same room, just a change in background. But this game, at least when we were outside, seemed like such an atmospheric game with, with the art style that I would almost want to explore in this art style a little bit more. Oh yeah, speed time. Speed up. This is a pretty cool effect, actually. All it's doing is bumping up our platform speed. It's flashing our character white, and then we have a little bit faster rate of fire and movement. So that's a cool power up, something that we can easily, easily add if we, if not, we've already done it in the pixel platformer series where we add in our run behavior. You just add in the extra addition here. All right. Our scientist is clearly not capable of dodging. We can see that the bullet explosions are pretty much two frame animations of stuff that we've gone over, especially in the 360 motion video, where you can see the, the bullet disappear like that, which is nice. Um, okay, power up speed, speed boost. All right. When it collides, you can see that it does that explosion effect, which I like. It really... Oh man, it looks like they've spent a lot of time hand drawing their particles. Like those are not particle effects from from their engine, it's from whatever they drew. And that looks like it took time, which shows. Every picked up coin adds to my score. Exterminate. So I guess this game is just kind of a pick it up and keep going. I wonder if we'll get to a boss. If, if so, that's where we will... Uh, End it. I've already learned a lot from just playing the first 12 minutes of this game here. Let's see. Although I do kind of wish I could shoot in more than one direction, it is an interesting mechanic. Alright, speed boost. I want my firewall back. That was cool. Oh, are you my firewall? You are, wow, as soon as I said that. Ask and ye shall receive with the Bug Butcher. Which is a clever name, I like the name. Because I guess these are like alien bugs. They don't really remind me of, they, they feel like they're, they're bouncy bugs. All right. But everything about this has such a handcrafted feel. Like it, all these animations look like they were made in Flash too. Which, for me, is really nostalgic. Final wave! Alright, let's do this. Oh man, there's four of these guys. This, I, I can't remember the name of that game. It was like Bubble Blast, Bubble Shooter game. Uh, you guys can let me know in the comments what that mini clip game was from back in the day. But this is exactly like it. It's just the action platformer with fast bullets and particles. Which is cool. Oh man. Come on, I'm not dying. We got this. We're not ca capturing my scientist. Oh, nice. Winner, winner, winner. Oh, what? You said that was the final wave. I took your word. Do I only have 39 seconds left to finish this? And then I'm done? Go, 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 go. There's one more left. Nice. Cool. All right. It was a pretty fun game. I mean, adding in this kind of feature is very, I would say it's almost safe because, you know, you, you have this to always fall back on when the level's over, so now there's no continuity to it. Although they're trying to have a story to it a little bit. Um, I, I don't know where they're, they're going to head with this or how many levels this is going to go on for. Um, but let's just, I don't know, maybe we should just try and die and see what happens. But for the most part, I love I love everything about this level. It looks like they spent a long time designing this one level and making sure that this 
uh, was the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and your annoying stream. Which is something else to be said. If you're de if you're developing your game right now, and you're watching this video to get more tips on what you could put into your game, which is what I hope that you're getting out of this, um, you know, it it's worth it to only design one room and make the best game you can with that one room and then move on from there and develop as it goes on. You know, don't design a huge open world and then design your gameplay. Design your gameplay and then design a world. So that's where I'm kind of hoping this game goes and I get out of this room. But even if I don't, it still seems like this is a very tight uh, gameplay mechanic game. And what gameplay mechanic game. What I meant by that was it seems like they have their gameplay mechanics under under control here and that they really focused on just doing that and not exploring and not going crazy. So it's it's up to you if you like those kind of games or not. And I'm not recommending uh, you go buy this game. This game although this game was relatively cheap on Steam, uh, I am recommending this game as far as gameplay elements go and everything else that we've talked about in this video so far I think what I need to start doing is compiling a list at the end of this so you can actually just kind of read the list and then you can watch the video and uh, go over what it is that we talked about and I guess this one mechanic here of this guy always getting stuck is my my one tie-in to whatever storyline he, he plays in this game and my suit my my extermination suit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Speed up. See now, this kind of feels like to me that it should speed up time, but also slow down the enemies, which it don't. I don't think it does. It speeds us up, but they still go the same. So I think that that mechanic could have been a little bit more intuitive, or at least there could have been uh, an additional power up that, while I'm faster, they could be slower, and I can just get them at the same time, which could have been cool. But again, like I said, it just seems like this game is all about the gameplay. And it's all about this one level, and it's all about enjoying your time in this this level. So if you like those kind of games, or if you want to play these kind of games, then definitely check this game out. But really, I think I learned a lot in the few minutes that we did play this game. I think that that is going to be it for this uh, Let's Play to Learn. But I really did have a fun time with this game, and now I have some few things to go back on. Uh, I'm not sure if there's many things that we can actually create, but if there is and you want to see something that we spoke about in this game, if you want to see me recreate it in Construct 2, then let me know in the comments below and I will gladly do so. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and comment below if you want to see more and let me know what game you want me to play next. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.